A year after KXAN exposed high turnover at the Texas Attorney General's office, slowing the release of millions of dollars owed to victims of violent crimes, and two months after a new law went into effect expanding eligibility, spurred from our reporting. Tonight, we have discovered problems still persist. KXAN investigator Matt Grant has more on how victims and advocates say the state's staffing woes are causing survivors to suffer again. These days, Stephen Heller is riding high. Lucky, he says, to be alive. So this is your first time being back in this spot? Yeah, it's my first time back. It was at this Austin intersection where Heller was struck last New Year's Day. Luckily, everything ended up being okay, which is amazing. According to the police report, the driver was a convicted felon fleeing in a stolen car. I remember feeling the car going up into the air, seeing my bike flying away from me the other direction that I was going, and then just hitting the ground very hard. Heller suffered minor injuries, but was hit with around $3,000 in hospital bills. Texas's Crime Victims Compensation Fund agreed to pay for certain crime-related costs. That was the first time I ever heard of that specific fund. And I thought that was a really cool feature of our state. The fund, operated by the Attorney General's office, collects money in part from convicted criminals to help survivors of violent crimes. The program has awarded more than $70 million in previous years. Heller applied in March and was approved in June. But nearly six months later, and almost a year after his accident, he's yet to receive any money. It's getting to where my bills are final past due at this point. I've been having to make little payments myself on them just to avoid going to collections. In that time, records show the person who hit him was arrested, jailed, pleaded guilty, and was sent to state prison to begin a two-year sentence. It's pretty amazing that our judicial system is acting faster than what seems like a simple fund payout. It's an absolute lifeline. Some victim rights advocates tell KXAN they're also seeing survivors waiting longer for assistance the state promised needed to rebuild their lives. Donna Bloom is director of legal services for a domestic violence and rape crisis center near Dallas. It's been really difficult. It has slowed tremendously over the last several years. Uh, and we are contending with wait times of up to four, five, six months in order to get eligibility decisions for our clients. Internal data we obtained reveals in July 2021, victims were waiting an average greater than 100 days for their first payment. That average had nearly doubled by this past July, a month after Heller was approved. When I called my case manager, every time it went to voicemail, and every time I left a voice message, I never got a call back. His frustrations documented in emails to police, with one advocate telling him in August, unfortunately, crime victims' compensation is way behind on processing claims due to staff shortage, and I honestly cannot give you a time frame for when you can expect payment. How do you feel that almost a year later, you still haven't received a dime? I feel pretty upset and annoyed because I've been contacting the police department and their offices, like basically non-stop several times per month and sometimes per week with little change or information about why things aren't happening. We asked the Attorney General's office about increasing wait times for Heller and other crime victims. We have not heard back and tomorrow we'll tell you more about our efforts to get answers from the office. What we do know in last year's annual report, Attorney General Ken Paxton blamed staffing issues on quote COVID-19 and related economic challenges. Also tomorrow night, a former top official at this division inside the AG's office is speaking out for the first time about what she's seen as the reasons behind the wait. Matt Grant, KXAN Investigates. And our thanks to Matt for that. In September, a new law went into effect expanding eligibility to household members of victims, increasing the amount of relocation compensation, and lifting the cap on lost wages and bereavement leave for family members of murder victims. Now, at the time, the agency told us it was nearly fully staffed, thanks in part to across-the-board pay raises for all state employees.